Craig from Leesburg, Virginia, WAVA. Hello there, Craig. How are you? Hi, how's it going? Very well, thank you. How can we help you today? Uh, um, for the past, uh, well, for a while, my wife and I have been having a lot of difficulties, and my wife has a lot of anger issues. Um, it stems back a lot of it from her childhood, and uh, really her entire upbringing since then. Okay. And uh, uh, I mean, our marriage has been on the rocks really for about about a good year, and uh, we've uh, we've gone through a lot together. Uh, she's gone as far as you know, pretty much th- uh, taking her rings off and throwing them at me. Mm. Uh, uh, she had, uh, we got into a huge fight, and um, I tried to stop her from leaving because she had our kids scared, and she almost r- uh, ran me over with the back of the car when I tried to stop her. Hey, if I was talking to her, um, and I said, hey, what's wrong with him? What would, what do you think she'd say was the big complaint, the big problem? Uh, I've actually asked that to her, yeah. and uh, she cannot give me a straight answer. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, uh, I think a lot of it has to do, uh, one with, uh, the abuse in her house when she was young and two, uh, what she went through with her ex-boyfriend of seven years. Okay. So and does, does so, she, does she feel like you're controlling Craig? Did she ever say no. that? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, she tries to make me out like that, but I sit okay. there and I ask her every day when I come home, I work, uh, 12 to 14 hour shifts. And even when I come on, like I ask her, you know, uh, is there anything I can do for you? Can I uh, can I help you somehow? And she's more out to prove uh, prove things that she uh, she can do it herself. She wants to be independent of everything. She doesn't want to need you. So what was that? She doesn't want to need you. No, because she does not want, right? want to need me. Because in a then lot of she's ways. going no. to be hurt, let down, abandon, all the things from her childhood. Uh, well, her father didn't abandon them. Okay. Her father was extremely mentally and physically abusive to okay. I, uh, them and, I guess, their mother. I don't know the entire story there. Okay, okay. so tell us uh, how so we can we can help you here. Okay. Um, basically, what I'm trying to figure out is uh, she's getting to the stage where she's starting to realize she needs help. Okay. So, uh, so I mean, po- uh, positive, good thing there, and she uh, she just got herself on an antidepressant. It seems to be working. Okay. But she is still very, very touchy about um, getting counseling because uh, she is in desperate need of anger management. All right. How long has uh, she been on the antidepressant? Uh, she, uh, we just started it. Uh, I mean, we just started it like, uh, like about a week and a half ago, and it, it, she's like, it's been like a Jekyll and Hyde. She was Mr. Hyde before, and she's Dr. Jekyll now because she's wonderful at the moment. Yeah. Well, but I, mm-hmm. I tried to talk to her the other day about uh, getting counseling, and she just almost flew off a rocker. Yeah, you, you need and to you need to back off on, on that for right now. Give give the meds about four to six weeks to really. Uh, be in because it's, it's the type of depression that the medication can help. It doesn't help all kinds of depression, and you may see a lot, a lot lessening of that anger. And then I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to her about anger management. I wouldn't talk to her about her going to counseling. I'd say, you know, w- we need to go to counseling uh, I, together. Well, I, I haven't. I, see, the way I've approached it, I, I'm thinking of it from an anger management perspective. But the way I've approached her on it is, I want us to get help. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. we, uh, we need help in our uh, marriage. So I, uh, and, and, and own it. Yeah, say, it's a we problem. With her. Yeah, and say, you know, I do things that set you off, and I've got to understand why I do those and how I do those. So it's just it's something we both need to do together. Well, and at a time when she's not set off, I, I think you can ask her about what happened, what was the thought right before she got triggered? Because it sounds like she's getting triggered. And it, it may be just things that are reminding her of something in the past. And she's doing a lot of fleeing the situation, running, throwing her rings. It's all over. It's all ruined. Um, and so she's going to hightail it out of there before the bad stuff happens. So if you kind of try to pinpoint where is she getting triggered, what is 
the thing that strikes that yeah. first and, and, and she, uh, the thing is she doesn't want uh, she's as much said this uh, she doesn't uh, she tried for five and a half years and she doesn't want to deal with it anymore even though i uh, i've changed because i have my problems and mm-hmm. uh, i'm you know i'm human uh i'm sure i i may have caused uh, one or two issues but uh, i've become a different person i had put my mind to changing and i have changed and even she, if she can even admit that, but now she says, "Well, you've changed too uh, too late. Why should uh, why should I uh, why should I so, try?" So, so sweetheart, you're really scared, aren't you? You already lived through your uh, childhood she, she once. She had me scared for uh, quite a while. Yeah, she did. She really did. She had me scared for quite a no, while. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. To s- Craig, Craig, She's... to say to her, "Honey, you're really scared, mm-hmm. aren't you? You've lived through your childhood once. I don't blame you for not wanting to go through it again." But we're kind of getting the picture of what you went through and how you felt because now we're all feeling it too. Yeah, and what I think the part that scares me the most is not it's not me; it's the fact that it's rubbing off on my uh, on my children now. Well, my absolutely, of course. Well, sure. Okay. Of course. Okay, let me let me explain something to you, Craig. The way she was raised, she became, you know, very self-sufficient. She had to take care of herself mm-hmm. and raise herself. So anything you do that suggests that she can't handle herself feels controlling. And it doesn't feel controlling to you, but it feels controlling to her because she's, she's I can do it myself kind of an attitude. It's that type of thing. She had to do that to survive her childhood. Mm-hmm. That's her attachment style. It's a very mm-hmm. avoidant. It's not very close at all. Even though she wants that closeness, she gets scared of it. So when Jill's saying this really makes you afraid, you, doesn't it? That you're, you're recognizing now the fear that somebody's going to come in and control. So when you make suggestions that are directed at her, that's not going to work. And it's going to trigger something. So, you know, making sure, like you said, it's we got to do it. But don't go into great detail. Just kind of say, uh, you know, I'm hoping we can go because I, I need help in, in being the kind of person that's going to be helpful to you and safe for you. And that's the kind of thing that you got to work towards. But th- that's what you're dealing with is that sense of self-sufficiency. I can handle yep. it myself. <coughs> And I don't need you. And when you come in with any suggestion at all, that's controlling. That's how she yeah. experiences it. No matter it. how you say it. No matter how you say it, mm-hmm. it's still going to be controlling. Craig. Well, w- Craig. once in a while, she will uh, she will break da- uh, down completely. Her defenses will break sure. down. She'll even ask, "Why do you uh, Why do you still love me?" Yeah. 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 Uh, she hates and, this. And uh, my only answer for her is, uh, uh, "There's no reason. I just love you. I chose to love you, and I chose to be here with you." To, Okay. I wouldn't be Craig, here otherwise. Craig, tell us about the five-year-old. What's going on with her? She, uh, she has got. Uh, she just started kindergarten, so she's starting that transition. We originally lived in Washington State, so uh, she's gone through a lot of different transitions. We, we moved from Washington State out here. Uh, then she, uh, she um, uh, then she's starting school, and she doesn't want to go to school because she doesn't want to be away from mommy. Okay. And uh, she's throwing temper tantrums uh, up and uh, down over the littlest thing. And uh, Beth has told me, and I've even seen this happen, about when she tries to get her on the bus, she will run away from her. And Beth will uh, have to uh, run around okay. the, uh, the So here's the what I think. This, this, uh, is, this is so, um, so severe a reaction to separation that why don't you make your goal of getting your five-year-old to get some help that there would be counseling for your five-year-old now that counseling has to involve your wife see uh, uh, we, uh, we just started uh, that okay we, she just saw so i think for the first time the right. other week okay so i think uh if you talk to the counselor uh and you're able to communicate what's going on i think this could be the inroads to Mm -hmm. getting help for your wife Uh, anytime you're working with a five-year-old it ends up being working with Mm -hmm. the husband and wife because she's acting out the tension and the stress between you guys and you want to after the antidepressant is has taken hold you you might want to consider 
could this five-year-old be homeschooled and the for a year no. and the bond no. <laughs> okay <laughs> Right, but no, he does not have the patience for that. Right. Well, you don't know it. till well, you, you see this know. medication. Wait, see. Wait, you see what you the don't know do. what it's going to do uh, to change a little bit of the chemical reaction in the brain. It might be uh, very, very good for her. Let, let's just wait and see what happens with that. We'll take a break.